Hello and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. I'm Pastor Haley Houseman from Long Creek and Dalton City United Methodist Churches. Thank you for joining us in our online worship this week. We'll begin with Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Najib. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for your holy presence that is with us as we gather for online worship today. God, we give you thanks that you turn our mourning into dancing and our weeping into laughter. Draw us closer to you as we prepare for your coming again in this Advent season. Draw us closer to you as we gather for online worship today. God, we thank you for your presence that is with us today and always. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, and release from darkness for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and as a garden causes seeds to grow, so the Sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It is the third Sunday of Advent, so today we will light our two purple candles that we already lit, and then the pink candle today for joy. If you want to get your wreath ready, join me in our reading. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and their tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it's tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland or a crown instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a spirit of despair. No matter how far we feel from the spirit this season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. Let me repeat that. No matter how far we feel from the Spirit this season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season, not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. O 
O come, O come, Emmanuel. Stay tuned for our children's sermon today. Hey you all, it's Pastor Haley. So it is the third Sunday in Advent, and if you're paying attention to what we just did, we just lit the pink candle to represent joy. So this week I was able to go visit my best friend. It was the first time I got to see her and her husband and their dog for the first time in a whole year. You all know that is a very long time and some of you right now haven't seen your friends in a very long time either. As we spent time together, I thought about the joy that we had as we spent time together. There are lots of other things that also bring me joy like Christmas lights. And I also got to see Joy this week. Not only did I see Joy, like Joy, the actual Joy from inside out, but I also saw Joy as I saw kids looking at Christmas lights, as I saw people spending time together, as I saw people doing kind things like opening a door for someone and saying, or saying please and thank you for helping their neighbor who was in need. Where have you seen joy this week? Even in this season when there are lots of things that we don't get to normally do, there are still things that bring us joy. And the greatest thing that brings us joy and is joy is Jesus. Jesus is joy. Jesus is our joy. Jesus is the source of our joy. So I have a few questions for you today. Where have you seen joy this week? What brings you joy? My challenge to you this week is to go and do something that brings joy to someone else. So let your light shine and go and bring joy to someone else today. And let's pray. God, we give you thanks for your presence that is with us. Help us all to share your joy and love with others. Help us all to continue to grow in your love and in your grace. Keep watch over us and over our friends and family in this season. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Will you join me in a time of prayer? Holy God of love and light, We thank you for your presence that is with us as we gather for online worship today. God, we pray that you would continue to be with those that we know who are sick. We pray for those who need your healing touch. God, we lift up those that we know who have had surgeries this week. We pray for healing in their bodies. God, we continue to lift up essential and healthcare workers to you. Continue to watch over them, give them strength, give them courage. Help to keep them safe and healthy in these days. Help all of us, God, to continue to do the things that we need to do in order to continue to keep one another safe and healthy. God, we continue to lift up our leaders to you, help to give them wisdom and guidance during this season. God, we lift up all of our families to you, continue to bind us together even in this time when we can't always be present with one another. God, we lift up our families and our friends to you. God, we lift up um, teachers and students to you as this semester kind of comes to a close. God, we pray that you would just continue to do the work that only you can do. God, we lift up those who are in need. Help us, God, to reach out and to reach those who are in need during this season. Help us, God, to continue to love one another and to be your hands and your feet. God, we take time now for us to also Lift up the things that are on our own hearts to you today. Thank you, God, that joy can be found in knowing you. Thank you for your love for each one of us. Thank you, God, for your peace that surrounds us. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. 
God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be obedient and to do the things that you're calling us to do. Help us to continue to be your hands and your feet, even in this season. And our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. Brown paper packages tied up with string. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudel, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, sashes. snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes. Silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad. I simply remember my favorite things and then I don't feel so bad. This song has been following me around for the past week or so. I've heard it every day at least once and if I wasn't hearing it out loud on the radio or on a TV show or something, it was stuck in my head. So sorry if it's now stuck in your head too. But this year, 2020, if there was ever a year for us to remember our favorite things, it's this year. We all need to remember the things that bring us joy. So I wanna ask you this morning, what brings you joy? What are some of your favorite things that bring you joy? Today we are talking about joy. We are decking the halls for the company that is coming. And do you know the words to that song, deck the halls? Well, in deck the halls, there's that one line that says, tis the season to be jolly. Well, perhaps in 2020, you are not feeling very jolly. That is okay, and I guarantee that you are not the only one who is totally not feeling jolly in this season. This is definitely a different year, and all of us are experiencing Christmas in a different way and having to celebrate in ways that are totally different than what we are used to. Even though things are different in our world, there is still joy to be found. The reason that we celebrate this season the coming of Christ is still the real reason why we are celebrating. Even if we can't be together with one another or see all of our friends and family or do all of the traditions that we usually do, we can still celebrate Christ Jesus, the whole reason for this Christmas season. Even though things are different in our world, the company that is coming is still the same. We are still preparing and celebrating the coming of Christ Jesus. The real reason why we celebrate in this season is still the same. We are awaiting, we are awaiting the coming of Christ. We are preparing to celebrate his birth and wait in expectation for his coming again. So even in the strangeness and the differentness of this particular Christmas season, there is still light and hope and peace and love and joy to be found. Joy in its fuller spiritual meaning of expressing God's goodness involves more than the feelings. Joy is deeply rooted. Having joy includes feelings of good cheer and of happiness, but joy in its true spiritual meaning, joy means so much more than those particular feelings. It is knowing and expressing the goodness of God. It involves more than happiness or the fleeting happiness that we sometimes have in our lives. 
joy is deeply rooted in us. Joy is deeply rooted in knowing Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength, as Nehemiah says in chapter 8, verse 10. Joy, do you remember the Sunday school song? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Joy runs deeper. It isn't fleeting like happiness. Jesus is the source of our joy. And Jesus isn't going anywhere. Join me as we dig in and talk more about joy as we look at John chapter 1 today. Beginning in verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So John is kind of his own person. His gospel is not like Matthew's or Mark's or Luke's. We don't see anything here about the birth narrative of Jesus. There's nothing here about angels or shepherds or wise men or Zechariah or Elizabeth. He doesn't even talk about Joseph or Mary. John jumps right in talking about how the Word became flesh. He says that the Word was with God from the very beginning. And the Word came and He dwelled among us. He tabernacled among us, as some translations put it. God came down in the flesh in human form and made his home among us. Company came and company's coming again. In this word, in him, in Jesus is life. The life that is light to the world. The life that is light to all of humankind. The light that drowns out the darkness the light that can never, ever, ever be extinguished. This morning, I got multiple phone calls from Ameren letting me know that there was a power outage in my area. Now, thankfully, I had already gone and turned the light switch on and I had power, so I'm not quite sure why I got this message. But don't you know that I'm so glad that the power was on, that I had electricity, that there was light in the darkness. Thankfully, I had power already. Our world looks different when we don't have lights. Our our world looks different when we are lost in the darkness. We don't quite know what to do sometimes when we don't have electricity even. About 10 years ago or so, some ice storms came through Southern Illinois and I had to go multiple days without power. Now it was bad enough that I didn't have lights on in the dark of winter, but that also meant that uh, my heat was not working either. It got very cold. Thank God that God's power never runs out. Thank God that God's light never extinguishes in our world. Thank God that the light of Jesus in us 
never extinguishes either. Thank God that God's power never runs out. We don't have to worry about Christ's light ever being extinguished. And the light of Christ in us will never go out either. So don't go hiding it under a bushel, you know. <laughs> Let your light for Jesus shine. Hang on a second. Isn't that better? Light shines brightest in the darkness. Light makes the things that it is on and pointed towards glow in a different way and look better. Light is often most obvious when it is the darkest outside. One of my favorite things about this season is Christmas lights. I love going out and seeing other people's lights. I like putting my own lights up and turning them on. The lights bring me joy. How about you? By the way, my neighborhood has some pretty good lights. So if you're in the area and know where I live, check out the neighborhood lights at night. They'll bring you some joy. Lights give an extra glow to whatever they are shining on. Now, do you know that the moon does not have any light of its own? The moon simply reflects the sun, the S-U-N. This kind of reminds me of what we are supposed to do as followers of Jesus. We don't really have any light of our own, but we are called to reflect the light of the sun, the S-O-N. Are you reflecting the light of the sun into our world? Let his light shine bright in you. Clear out the clutter, make a way, and allow his light in you to shine brightly and make a difference in our world. Help drive out some of the darkness. Right now, our world is definitely in a season of darkness. We are in a place where there have been more deaths from coronavirus in one day than there were on 9-11 or on the day of Pearl Harbor. There's a lot of death and darkness around us. Literally, nature is in a season of death and dying and darkness. The leaves have fallen. The sun is not shining as much. We are in the season where there is less and less daylight every day. Even though her world is in the season of darkness, there is still light and hope and joy and peace and love to be found. And as followers of Jesus, we know and we hold these things. And it is our duty and responsibility as followers of Christ to share these things with the world that is living in darkness. Even in this season where our world looks so different and we are having to do things differently, there are still plenty of opportunities for us as followers of Jesus to shine the light of Christ into the world. There is still opportunity for us to give joy to the world, to remind the world that there is joy, that Jesus has come and we are preparing to celebrate his birth and we are celebrating that he will come again someday. There is plenty of opportunity to shine our lights for Christ and there is plenty of opportunity for us to shine our lights for Christ even in the midst of this darkness that our world is living in. The Word, the Word, became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Christ came. Emmanuel, God with us, is with us. Christ will come again. In that we can have hope and peace and joy and light and love. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Join me in prayer. God, we thank you that there is light to be found even in the deepest darkness. 
Thank you for the deep and abiding joy that can be found in knowing Christ Jesus. Help us to shine the light of Christ into our world, into this darkness that we are living in. We pray this in the mighty and loving name of Jesus. Amen. If you would like to extend your worship through giving your tithes and your offering, you can do so by sending it in to Long Creek or Dalton City or to Lenny or to Carol. You can also give online through the Illinois Great Rivers Conference website. Also a note for Dalton City, we are continuing to collect donations for Cunningham Children's Home. If you would also like to give to Cunningham, um, just make a little note as you send that in this week. Thank you to those of you who helped out with the food drive at Long Creek this week. Thank you so much for giving in the way that you have. At this point in time, we are continuing to meet online only. I know that during this special season, it is a time when we so want to gather together with one another um, for all of the traditional things that we do together at Christmas time. But in order for us to do what we can to help keep one another safe and healthy, um, we are continuing to worship online only during this season. So there will be a couple of things coming up in the next week or two for you to participate in um, through online worship. You are invited to join us for virtual caroling on Sunday, December the 20th. Katie will be taking requests of songs. You can sing along if you want, or you can mute yourself and just listen in. Um, but please join us on Sunday, December the 20th at 6 p.m. through Zoom. Also on Monday, December the 21st, it is the longest night of the year, so the day when there is the most darkness in the year. That is December the 21st. So on December the 21st, I will be posting our longest night, our blue Christmas service. Um, this year has particularly been one where all of us have experienced grief and loss. And so the Blue Christmas or the Longest Night service will be a particular one for us to name the things that we have lost in the season. The service will be posted on December the 21st. So feel free to join in at 6 p.m. when um, it's first posted or you can join in later on whenever it works for you. We usually celebrate together as Long Creek and Dalton City on Christmas Eve or Christmas Eve Eve. Um, or a few days before Christmas, we have a special candlelight service together. This year, of course, we won't be able to gather together in person, so I will post a Christmas Eve or candlelight service on December the 23rd at 6 p.m. So it will be available for you to join in the service at 6 o'clock on December the 23rd or on any time you would like to watch after that on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. Also, this is the last week that I'm collecting um, pictures of your Christmas trees or nativities or advent wreaths or any other Christmas related picture that you would like to send me. Those will be included in the video for our Christmas Eve candlelight service. On Christmas Eve at 6 p.m., um, we will join in ringing jingle bells and or singing Silent Night in our own homes join together as people all around the world and Methodists all across our um, conference join in singing at 6 p.m. or ringing jingle bells at 6 p.m. to celebrate the coming of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining in our online worship this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace and remind you of his love. God bless you all and have a fantastic week. Go spread some joy.